Hey Scotty, I just finished cooking some beans and I'm ready to rewatch the Call of Trinity. You want to join me? Ooh, that's much better. I guess some spaghetti western could wait a little bit. Why not? Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Stream unboxing videos. This series where Scotty and I take the time to unbox the products and read out cards while well, letting you know how good they are and if the product is truly worth your time and money. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, lay back and relax as we dive into this unboxing. I am your host Vlad, this is Scotty, and today we're diving into the collector boosters of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Thank you very much Scotty for this wonderful introduction. So this is going to be an interesting one. This expansion has quite quite a lot of subsets and therefore you're going to be able to find a lot of versions in here and on top of that every subset tends to have special versions even more so. In collector boosters, of course, chances are slow. If you're interested about the chances and all that, and what you can find inside, we made a guide and I'll link it in the description down below. So you can go and check that out if you want. And yes, this is printed in Japan, so that's great. Overall, it tends to be better quality. It's not necessarily best quality because foiling for Magic the Gathering has changed significantly and it tends to crumble, crumple, and pringle. So without further ado, let's dive in. I am hoping that you're having a wonderful time. I hope you're enjoying this expansion. We are a bit late, but that's because we actually published our own UK exclusive car marketplace. You can find us at verifriendlysharks.co.uk and I'll leave a link in the description down below. And so if you want to buy and sell or trade any of your cards online, then you can do so on our car marketplace. I am always interested in a collector box. I do actually collect each collector box. I know that sounds redundant, but that's true. So you got quite a nice foil. You have a beautiful, beautiful illustration. Most of the time nowadays, these illustrations are not actually part of the main set. So they're just part of, um, well, the packaging in that set. So as a saddle bag, basically, this is what it's supposed to be, a saddle bag. You open it up and then you get the beautiful contents inside of 12 collector booster packs. And that's about it. So I have my trusty scissors because these boxes, uh, my boosters tend to be a bit more annoying for me to open as I don't like to pull tab because it can damage the cards in here. And if they're Japanese, it means that they start backwards from a normal booster, meaning that um, if I'm not mistaken, the common and the uncommon are at the back and the rare at the front and the tokens so i will start off with us and yes i'm quite excited there are quite a lot of good cards in here that you can get and i've really really enjoyed the set so far and i must say even the draft experience is pretty unique so let's start off and of course we've seen most of the cards so we'll just look at the rares and um, mythics that's about it but we'll stop and admire any more beautiful cards so we'll start with steer clear the Veil, the Desperate Bloodseeker, the Reckless Lackey, and the Resilient Roadrunner. I will say that the dad jokes and the puns in this expansion have been amazing. And also this reference with the Roadrunner and Willy Coyote is really, really fun. So then we have Intimidation Campaign and Hellspur Brute. And whoa, beautiful, beautiful floor art. Went which is quite nice if you're collecting them. You can get them in the bundle, by the way. So you can get these foil in the bundle. You get one each of these foil in the bundle. So that's not bad. And the first breaking news is SM Capture, followed by a foil bird in the garden. There you go. And then what should we have? Oh, the first rare, uh, it's actually a mythic. It's Esoteric Duplicator. We've seen it before. There's a little bit of damage here in the corner. Don't know if you can see that, but other than that, yep, nice card. I wonder if we'll see lots of play in Constructed or not. And then we move on. Ooh, Terror of the Peaks in Boardless. That is a great, great little card to have. That is a hit right there. It's a 5-4 Dragon. It's a reprint for um, M2021. So the core set 2021 has flying, cost five, uh, spells your opponent's cast. That it, target, that creature, costs an additional three life to cast. So it's worth three life. And whenever another creature enters, the battlefield in your control terror of the peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target which is insane in general so this is a great great card and it's a boardless beautiful beautiful and then we have elemental eruption this is part of the commander cards we will not go too much in depth into the commander cards mainly because we want to keep it as um spoiler free version for 
when we actually go and unbox the commander decks but other than that yep we're gonna have a look at that um later down the road but this is just a creature no it's actually a sorcery cost six create a four four red dragon creature token with flying and prowess and you get to storm so this is probably gonna be for the quick draw deck but i'm not sure and anyway we continue on oh reanimate wow this was a nice pack a nice reanimate this we already saw in the play boosters it's so cool that they brought these back <laughs> it's so weird to have the ability to draft with them or playing limited formats with them this is just incredible um yep this is a another rare here and then the uh, end be all is a seraphic steed is a 2-2 unicorn mount to cost to Selesnia, first strike lifelink, and whenever it attacks while saddled, you get to create a 3 3 white angel creature token with flying. And you saddle it for four, insanely strong, very, very nice. And then we have a psychedelic, very psychedelic copy version and a mercenary token. So there you go, on and on, onward and upwards. That was a great, great start, I think. It was really, really nice. Let's see, what shall we get further up ahead into the booster packs? And um, yeah, I will say um, at the end, of course, we will review the product as a whole, but I think I'm looking forward to more to this product than the MKM ones. You know, the Merlin's Account of Manor ones, you didn't really get that many special versions. In this set, there are so many other versions of cards. It's much nicer in these collector boosters. Then we have a Sterilist Key Keeper. Then we have Take the Fall, Voracious Vermin, the Holy Cow, Take for a Ride. And then we have Deep Muck, Desperado and betrayal at the vault and then we'll have a land beautiful beautiful full art swamp i really like these lands now we have humiliate quite nice and next we have back for more quite quite strong and Kellen joins up, we've already seen this before. It's a bit of a shame, all the cards seem to have a little bit of chipping. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but a little bit of chipping at the borders. Um, but yeah, Kellen joins up and the foil rear. And then this is the actual, just the first rear proper. So yeah, I'll keep it here. <laughs> and then we'll get Garrett, Mirror of the Wilds, which is seen before, good mythic. And this is a borderless one, uh, uh, I mean, extended art one. Then we have Cataclysmic Prospecting, which is a sorcery, costs X and double red, and it deals X damage to each creature for each mana from a desert spent to cast a spell. You create a tap treasure token, so interact with deserts. That's interesting. And then we have Surgical Extraction, always a good card to have. Very, very decent. I really like that. And also the reprints and the breaking news are insane. And then we get, ooh, Duelist of the Mind Foil. This is Nathan Stewart's card for the World Championship win. So this was 2023, no, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think it was 2023. Um, yeah, so this is a really good card. I like it. I've reviewed it before, so we won't go too much into depth with it. And then we have an Ox scenario. But yeah, I think it's quite a decent card. Don't underestimate it because th that draw ability is just going to be insane, even in constructed formats. And so on and so forth. We shall continue on to the Raven of Fellowments and irascible wolverine soured springs rodeo pyromancers longhorn sharpshooter shifting grift i love these three spells they're such a cool addition to magic the gathering i really think they're awesome unscrupulous contractor and then an island and we get back for more and decisive denial and Ooh, one last job. That's a nice one. It's a sorcery spree. Cost three plus any of the following options or altogether return target creature car from your grave to the battlefield. So that's really good for white. And then return target mount of vehicle car from your grave to the battlefield or return target or equipment car from grave to your battlefield and attach it to a creature you control. Very, very good. I think a lot of commander decks are going to make use of this. Uh, not necessarily for the one in the middle, but the first two are definitely going to be something that players might be interested in and then we look at the next so we have Sterringer back terror and extended arts it's a seven seven flying trampler it costs four but it gets minus one minus one for each card in your hand and you can plot it for three so that's a nasty nasty little bugger very very strong and then we have arcane heist it costs four and it's blue sorcery you may cast target instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost if that spell will be put into the graveyard exile and then you can cipher it. it's cool and 
And as I said, we don't go too much into the reviews for these ones. And then we have, oh, Outlaws Marion. This was the enchantment that we were talking about when opening the play booster. This is the one that creates the three types of human tokens. So, yep, this is back from Throne of Eldraine. And it's nice to see it come back. And then the last one is a foil surgical extraction. Well, that's very nice and very lucky. That is a good card right there. Very good card. Very good card. And then we get a clue and a treasure. Get a clue, man. Get a clue. So that that surgical instruction right there, that's probably worth a little bit. I know it's been reprinted now, but I think it's still a very, very strong card. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind. And uh, next up, let's see what we got. So far, it's been great. So far, it's been great. Sorry. I, I, I need to remember that I need to flip it around. Now we have Drover Grizzly and Daring Thunder Thief, Bridal Bighorn, Sterling Supplier, Emergent Haunting. I actually think that's not a bad card for limited. It can be really strong. Ruthless Strawbringer, Gem Life Food, Sky Explorer, and a forest. Yay, we get to see the forest. I don't think we've seen the forest outside of the bundle. So that's the first time I think we open it. Then we get another Decisive Denial and a fierce retribution and we start with rakdos the muscle that is a mythic card six five demon mercenary that costs a whooping five and it is Ragdos, of course. Flying Trample, whenever you sacrifice another creature, exile cards equal to its mana value from the top of target player's library. So it can be even your opponent until your next turn, and until your next end step. So in that turn as well, you may play those cards and mana of any type can be spent to cast those spells. Sacrifice another creature and Ragdos gains indestructible at the end of turn. Tap it, activate only once each turn. So this is quite strong because it has the engine in the card itself it's one packet and because in these colors in this expansion you get a lot of mercenary tokens this shouldn't be too hard to achieve it's very very strong and very very nice enjoy that and i think well i mean we're lacking Vraska, uh fibble thup and uh, i mean i don't think fibble thup is part of the of the crew but yeah fibble thup Vraska, kellen and um, who else? I mean, I guess Jace, if you really want to go for it, and Noko. Those are the ones that were like, oh, Lost Jite. Wow. This is the extended art Lost Jite. Beautiful card. I actually love this card. I know that, you know, there are a lot of strong contenders out there for the slot of equipments, but I really love this card. And I'm a sucker for the original Umazawa Jite. I was there. I opened it myself back in the day so i really love this card and I, I love seeing it here that is great and then we have vihan gold waker this is the general of one of the commander decks is a 3-3 dwarf warlock that's an interesting combination i guess you know because warlock is is um if i'm not mistaken it's one of the outlaw types so that's that's always nice and it's more do and other outlaws you control have vigilance and haste and at the beginning of of combat on your turn you may have treasures you control become a 3-3 construct assassin okay and artifact creatures in addition to their other types until the end of turn that's really cool interesting card and then two more for this pack we have dust bowl okay not a great card and then whoa that is beautiful oh come on that is such a shame look at that that is the first uh, vault card that we get from Mori Vault, but you can see here there is a huge, huge just scratch from the machine right there on this sheet. That is so disappointing. But anyway, for Mori Vault, this is a big score card. And uh, yeah, taps for generic and for three, tap, discard a card. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the number of artifacts you control. Put one of those cards in your hand and the rest of the bottom of the library in random order. Yeah, bit disappointment. Big actually disappointment when that happens, but what can we do? The quality control in this game is abysmal, but then again, it costs very little, right? Ha 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 ha. Yeah, of course. All right, <laughs> let's continue on. And let's see, imagine you open the most expensive card in the deck in the, the whole set, but it has this huge, humongous crash on top of it. But yeah, that just is going to ruin your day pretty badly. Anyway, Mystical Tether. Uh, take up the shield, Skullduggery, Bucolic Ranch, uh, Cutting Coyote, there you go, we have Willy Coyote and the Roadrunner in the same box, Requisition Raid, a Mountain, yay, and then Hindering Light, nice, and 
We have Thornado, the puns are real, and Van Mir, new blonde. Okay, not a bad rare, not a bad rare. It's quite strong and limited. And then we have Wily Duke, a teen hero, which is, if I'm not mistaken, yep, the one that, okay. So it's a 4-2 legendary human ranger, cost three, vigilance. When it becomes tapped, you gain one life, you draw a card. So it's one of those saddle components where you put it on a mount and just otherwise you make some insane plays very very strong then we get we ride at dawn that's an enchantment it costs three it's one legendary creature spells you cast have convoke very strong and whenever your commander attacks you create a one one red mercenary creature token with the usual so that's really really nice actually it's gonna be really cool to be able to convoke your commander over and over and then we get oh another ley line binding very beautiful very nice card i really enjoy that one and then uh, we saw this before earlier this is a vraska joins up so we saw the card and uh, yep cute extended art foil okay next we are on the last booster of the first half i'm hoping to get a bit more of these big scorecards from the vault versions because they are really really beautiful i really enjoy them anyway let's go on we have desert stew and then inventive wingsmith and spring splasher and festering gulch and we have visage bandit fleeting reflection frontier seeker a swamp and now we have all the colors i think except for the planes so we just need the planes fierce retribution a humiliate foil and dust animus very decent card actually pretty cool and i love the plot abilities then we have smuggler surprise very nasty surprise can come up from this one and ooh, crackling spell slinger it's a 2-2 two -two human wizard cost five flash when it enters battlefield you if you cast it in the next instant sorcery spell you cast this turn has storm very very strong very very nice and then two more and we have oh decimate okay not bad we saw it before and the last one oh rectus the muscle that is beautiful that is just beautiful in the wanted poster version very 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 nice so as you can see there are so many versions you can get in the suspension and because of, there are so many it's always nice to open collector boosters hey 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 all right let's go on we'll start the second half and wish us luck here we go here we go okay oasis gardener spinewoods paladin Thunder Salvo, Tumbleweed Rising, and we have Thrash the Town, Thunder Lasso, Arid Archway, hey planes, yay, bingo, 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 we have the full bingo, there you go, then we have Buried in the Garden once more, from the beginning, and Hindering Light and Foil, very beautiful foiling, I will say, I love the foils in this version, they're quite nice, then we have, ooh, Generous Plunderer, as a 2-2 that costs 2, Thread, Human, Rogue, Menace, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a treasure token, and when you do, target opponent creates a tap treasure token too, and whenever it attacks, it deals damage to defending player equal to the number of artifacts they control, so this is definitely a chromatic card, and from the big score sheet, not one of the better ones, but still, hey, oh, no, Satoru, the Infiltrator, yay, is a 2-3 Human Ninja Rogue, with menace and it costs two and whenever it and or one or more other known token creatures enter the battlefield in your control if none of them were cast or no mana was spent to cast them draw a card really nice as well for ninja decks i will say that so that's really nice and then we get dune chanter as a two three plant druid that costs three it's green has reach lands you control and lands cards you own that aren't on the battlefield are deserts in addition to the other types so this is going to be for the desert deck and and then lands you control have tap add one mana of any color and tap mill two cards you gain one life for each land card mill this way very interesting spin i would love to see that deck we're going to review it just for you so we'll see how good it is and then we have electro dominance once more with feeling and the last one is even interrupter and the foil extended art beautiful card very strong i believe and that was not a bad fool at all so yeah let's shall I continue on and we'll finish up this half and then we'll review what we got at the very end ankle biter then we have peerless rope master and cock tarantula it's a really annoying one to say jagged barons shackle slinger of course and then bounding feldar cactus folk sure shot 
Uh, swamp. We've already done the bingo, so that's it. Skewer the critics. Very nice. Fling and foil. Very beautiful foiling. And we get three steps ahead and a normal foil. We've seen it before. Ooh, Feeble Thop. Lost on the range. Another one of my favorite cards of this, this expansion. It's a 1-1 one, one Homunculus that costs three. You have Ward 2 on it, which is really good. And you may look at a top card of the library at any time. The top card of the library has plot the plot cost is equal to its mana cost you may plot no land cards from the top of your library that is an insanely good commander i believe and also in general this is just overall great card for this expansion so i really love it and yeah fable thump is one of my favorites then we have forges foundry it costs three and is an artifact you tap to add one blue and when you spend this mana to cast an instant resource to spell mana value three or less you may exile that spell instead of putting it into the sonus graveyard as it resolves so i don't understand quite the first part because you're just exiling instead of putting it into graveyard it allows you to basically pay an extra mana to spend to cast instant sorcery spell but uh, a mana rock that forces you to remove those cards might be a little bit annoying we'll see into the deck itself and then for five you may cast any number of spells from among cards exiled well oh, there that's that's why i read the whole card with forges foundry without paying their mana cost activate only as a sorcery so that's very nice and if you can get it to untap which you know there are quite a few cards that get you to that that, that would be a strong card and we have endless detour okay you know take a spell no land permanent or card in graveyard puts in top or bottom of the library not the strongest of the breaking news and we have another one <laughs> but this one is foil damn it all right and then a copy and a mercenary oh well duplication is still always an issue with the collector boosters they never really got the hang of it they've gotten a little bit better i mean duplication at the beginning and the first throne of old drain collector boosters boxes wow that was who that was a bad thing you just get like three or four of the same card in different versions in just one little box anyway let's see we have bristle packs entry and then we have discerning peddler and bristling backwards of zero muscle and Shepherd of the Clouds, Outcaster, the Gateway Gleamer, or Glamer, which is very beautiful, I must say. Very, very beautiful art. And we have a nice forest, and write down, and hypothesize, which I always read as hypothesize, but it's actually a plus a sizzle for shizzle. All right, and then we get, ooh, Obeka, Splitter of Seconds and Foil. It's gonna be a fun commander if you actually get to make a commander out of it. There are great cards for it. Marchisa, Dealer of Death, another great commander. The extended art, and then we get Heartless Conscription. It costs a whooping eight. Exile all creatures for each card exiled this way. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast a spell. Exile Heartless Conscription. Very, very, very cool. I really like this one. It's a whooping expansive card, but in Commander, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Then we get, ooh, Force of Vigor. Okay, cool. Uh, this was the original printer, if I'm not mistaken, in Modern Horizons. Um, comment in the, down below if you know where it came from. And then the last one is, ooh, Oko, Thief of Crowns. Okay, that's cool. The OG Oko Thief of Crowns. This is in the breaking news version. This thing broke the format so badly. <laughs> if you didn't play Oko um, back when the Pro Tour was around, it just was disgusting. And then no wonder it got banned everywhere. But that's ah, a nice little one. And we have a Vampire Rogue and a Mercenary. That's a beautiful card right there. Love the little card. Wow. Very, very nice. I really, really love these unboxings. Now, let's see. What do we get? I'm going wow, that was lucky. Right there, that was luck. All right, I'm still hoping for that mana drain, but you know, I don't think that will come. Dead Idealist and Stock Cold and Ambush Gigapede. I really don't like Millipedes. And then Fail Fording, Intrepid, Stable Master, Sailstorm Summoner, Duck Arlock, Grizzle Genius, a Mountain. Murder. That's been a murder. It's murder yet again. But I will say that the foils are quite, quite nice. And then we get Railway Brawler. So it's a 5-5 five, five Rhino Warrior. Costs 5, retrample. And whenever another creature enters battlefield under control, you put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, where X is its power, which is freaking insane if not dealt with. And you can plot it for 4. That is just a strong card. Strong card overall. And, ooh, Tiny Boy Jones up. That's very nice. 
nice. Legendary enchantment costs one, it's a standard art. And when it enters the battlefield, any number of target players each discard a card and whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, any number of target players each mill a card and lose a life. Is a great little card and has already started seeing play in all, quite a few formats, Standard and Pioneer. Great Water Fixer. Okay, so this is a 4-4 Lizard Mercenary and it costs 4 and Arachdos. Each low creature card in your graveyard has Encore X where X is the span of value. Wow, that is strong for the Outlaw deck. Uh, it's very very, very strong and then we get unlicensed hers once more very beautiful and ooh, a cool the unrepentant and the extended art very very nice and then a sheep token and a mercenary very nice so the two versions that are really really rare it's not necessarily just this vol version there's this vol version but with a textured kind so a raised kind it's a raised foil and also there are the news ones with a texture foil as well so those are the hit kind of you know serialized hit in these ones if you get those you are very lucky wanted griffin vault plunderer vengeful town folk and hard bristle bandit slick shot lock picker second to last booster here slick sequence so much slickening happening Hollow Marauder in this expansion, planes, and then Hypos Sizzle, <laughs> Sizzle, Journey to Nowhere, quite annoying and limited, and then, ooh, Botanical Sanctum, that is nice, that is foil, beautiful, and we have not seen one of the Borderless Arts yet, Hell to Pay, Sorcery, X, and one red, Hell to Pay deals X damage to target creature, create a number of tap treasure tokens equal to the amount of excess damage dealt to that creature this way, not bad, it's a bit nasty nasty and then we get felix five boots it is a five four ooze rogue that costs five with sultai and a cross with menace and war two if a creature you control the combat damage to a player causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time quite quite annoying little one quite annoying and then we have ooh vanishing verse exile target monocolored permanent that's nice and whoa, Hellspur, Posse Boss, not one of the great ones. It's a 2 4 Lizard Rogue, cost 4. Other outlaws you control have haste, and when it enters the battlefield, you get to create two of the mercenary tokens. So, not bad. End of mercenary deck, and then we have a wonderful little bird and another mercenary. Yeah. Uh, not bad in the outlaw deck, but not a hit. Okay, all right, last pack, last pack. Here we go. Let's see what we get. Let's see if we get lucky here. Okie doke. Last one, which is good luck. Right, Razzle Dazzler, Boneyard Desecrator, and Outlaw Medic. Oop. And Canyon Crab. And we missed one also by accident, a trick shot. And it kind of got stuck at the back. Uh, these cards are, do feel different than the normal ones. Rictus Robber, Bovine Intervention, the puns are real. And then a uh, beautiful island and Tyrant Scorn. Very nice little spell right there. And another Tyrant Scorn. Wow, the duplication is really strong in this one. And then a Naven Interrupter yet again. And well, another. Oh my God, that's the third one. Okay, I will say again, the duplication in this freaking product is freaking annoying and not gonna lie okay for the commander card we have tower winder it's a one one it costs two snake reach and death touch when it enters the battlefield you search a library engraver for a card named command tower reveal and put it into your hand if you search your library this way shuffle very very nice it allows you to fetch that one command tower that is incredibly good i think that's going to be a, a, a staple for a lot of decks down the road and okay the last two which is like um Hoping, let's see. Oh, overwhelming forces. Of course, destroy all creatures that your opponent controls. Draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. And the last one is, is not textured. And it's Imp's Mischief. Boo. Change the target of target spell with a single target you lose life equal to the spells mana value oh well that was a bit of a disappointment down the road but in the end we managed to get a couple of the wanted cards so that's very beautiful we got quite a few rares that overall are pretty pretty decent we got a lot of rares and mythics of the 
breaking news version and with some really good hits too so that's always nice and um, i believe that this is quite a nice product because of that uh look at that the surgical extraction has so gorgeous and another one and another reanimate so we got lucky there i think the first half of this one was quite quite significantly better i will say i'm a bit disappointed on the amount of um big scorecards that we got especially the fact that the only vault one uh the vault showcase version uh, was quite scratched but what can we do about that but yep yeah, and uh, not bad i'm happy i got my my jitty in in here and uh yeah we just got a slew of other nice little cards overall great 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 unboxing and um what should we say about the product as a whole i think that this um collector box over the other one like for example for murder's carnal manner this is worth more just like the lost canvas of exxon mainly because it is the kind of product that is necessary um to open if you're wanting to get all the wonderful versions because there are so many subsets and so many sub versions within a subset all of a, a specific cards this is definitely the one that if you want to get more out of your box more so than the murder's kind of manner which was quite underwhelming this one you get it here because there are so many cards in the extra sheets and there are so many possible also extra versions that you can get in here that are actually worth it so for example the vault cards are really really beautiful i think it's worth it if you really want to otherwise as usual just save the money buy the cards singularly that you're looking forward to buying so you can do that on our website for example and uh, other than that yeah i think that's it it's a great product i wish i could open a lot more because i really love this suspension and the cards printed in the extra sheets but other than that that's it from scotty and i let us know in the comments down below hey what do you think about the suspension and our unboxing and if we said anything stupid let us know and we'll read and reply to every one of them and until the next one we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next video bye